So we're reading the book, You Are What You Love by James Smith, and we're going chapter by chapter. And I know some of you are missing some classes, and some of you express some regret that you can't attend every class. So what I thought I'd do is record a few uh, videos about them, uh, what every chapter is about. As it, now, the class we do together is about an hour, and I talk about it for 40 minutes. I'm going to talk for about maybe five or maybe 10 minutes at max per video to go over every chapter. So in case some of you want to see what we kind of miss, I'll sort of let you get catch up to speed through these little short videos, and I hope they're useful. So the chapter one is called To Worship is to Be Human. Now, this is introduction. His main point is this. Um, people tend to think that you are what you think, meaning if you think something, that's what you are. And if you think you if you if think something, you'll do it. But he says this is a fallacy. This is actually a product possible of enlightenment. Rene Descartes said, as you know famously, uh, I think they're for I am, that we're primarily thinking beings and our bodies and our appetites are secondary. Uh, but let me give you an example of why this is false. I might know that I should diet. I might know what healthy food is. I could read all the books on what healthy food is, and yet I might find myself always eating junk food, unable unable to diet. Um, likewise, I can imagine I know I should exercise, I should lift weights, I should go running a lot, do a lot of cardio, and yet there I am on my couch watching Netflix, eating potato chips and not exercising at all. And so you might think the solution is, well, read a lot more books, write a lot, watch a lot of documentaries, you know, read articles on why it's good to exercise and why it's good to diet, eat healthy food. And yet all the knowledge in my head will not change my behavior, maybe a little bit, not really. So he uses this example to dispute the idea that we are just, you are what you think, that thinking is not primarily who you are. Um, more likely, though, what he says is actually you are what you love. Um, that's what the title of his book is, You Are What You Love. In fact, we are actually feelers of people with appetites beyond uh, thinking appetites. His, his image is uh, you're a brain on a stick. That's a modern image of what we have, kind of like a lollipop, that your brain is guiding everything and your body just follows. That's actually, that's not really the case. In fact, more likely, your appetites and hearts determine what you are. So for example, I really love junk food. I really love sitting around all day and um, thus I will be and all the knowledge in the world won't change that. Okay, so what does that have to do with God? Well, in fact, he says, we often think in the Protestant tradition, especially perhaps in the Reformed tradition, that what we do is we go to church and maybe this is not said explicitly, but I think it's kind of implicit, even what we're doing right now, it's like a class that I'll go to a worship service. In fact, my worship service looks a lot kind of like a college classroom. There's, uh, in college, there was a lectern, we have a pulpit, you have seats, we have pews. And a guy talks for about 45 to 50 minutes like a lecture, we call it a sermon, they call it a lecture or sermon, and they kind of deliver knowledge. And oftentimes it's very text-based, we read the Bible, uh, the pastor will sort of exegete what the verse means. He'll give you historical context, tell you what the Hebrew and the Greek is, tell you cognate languages, and then talk about the culture, and then says, what is Paul or what is David trying to tell you through this text? What is the meaning of this text? And you know, church becomes a very intellectual exercise. And afterwards, you might have Sunday school or things that feel like breakout sessions, kind of like sections from college, you know, and the, the, the emphasis seems to be, it's not purely intellectual, you know, but there's a heavy emphasis on intellectual stuff. And, you know, in our church traditions, often seems like uh, if there's a problem in your life, you know, the solution is, well, well, read a book, you know, or we need to learn more. We need more theology, more Bible classes that will make our lives better. And it does, it does. We know, I mean, Jamie Smith and I are neither one of us was anti-intellectual. And yet the problem is, you know, if we keep learning stuff about God and we learn better theology, that, that, that's good. That's good, of course. But does that change your appetite? You know, does that change our behavior any more than reading why healthy food is good and why exercise is good motivates us necessarily to eat better food and exercise more? No, in fact, the real problem is not that we don't know enough, although that might actually be the case in some places. But, you know, we actually might know plenty. But the problem is our hearts aren't in love with the good things. Their hearts aren't properly oriented. In fact, I'm a Aristotle, would, I mean, I'm sorry, Tom, uh, uh, Augustine would say our hearts are not properly ordered. Our affections are disordered. We have disordered loves. Um, it's not that we don't love God. We don't love him enough or we don't love him the right way. It's not that we don't love, it's not that part of us doesn't crave to live a holy life. We just don't love it the right way, or rather we love the unholy more than we love the holy. So if the problem is not that we have to learn more, right? I mean, the solution is not that we have to learn more, and our hearts are in a sense deformed or malformed. What is the solution? Are we just doomed? We have a malformed heart. 
Um, he says, in fact, no, we, we actually have to recalibrate our hearts. Our hearts have to be properly set. Well, then how do we have our hearts properly set? Um, you know, it'd be nice if you could just see God and boom, fall in love. Well, that might actually happen. But more likely, what he wants to say is there's a certain discipline, a spiritual discipline that comes to reorienting or recalibrating heart's love. And that is something he's going to call liturgy. We have to go through this repeated ritual, ritual habits that seem dull, don't seem spontaneous, don't seem heartfelt. Your repeated habits will reshape our hearts and guide them in the right direction. Um, he has this idea that I'd like to change, that I'd like to give my own spin on, called the telos. Our hearts direct our entire being in the right direction. Our hearts are properly oriented towards God. God has designed us to worship, and God has designed us to be happy when we are worshiping God. Um, Augustine has this quote that's rather famous, our hearts are restless until we find our rest in thee. But love is something that requires practice. We have to practice learning how to fall in love with God, and then we'll be at rest. This is my um, metaphor that I've sort of worked on. It's not from T uh, Jamie Smith, but I think it's apt. It's from Augustine. It's from Jonathan Edwards, but it's a modern metaphor. I want you to imagine um, a really, really powerful car, a sports car, like a Bugatti, like a thousand horsepower, and it's heading towards a certain destination, a certain goal, except the steering wheel is off. The steering wheel is not properly calibrated to go towards a goal. And so you're trying to get to this goal, and you're slamming on the accelerator. But the problem is the steering wheel's skewed. And the faster you go, the harder you go, you keep missing the point. You're not getting to where you want to go. Um, I want you to imagine maybe a smaller car, like a 1985 used Honda Civic with maybe 90 horsepower, except the steering wheel is perfect. The steering wheel is like the heart. Okay, It will get you to the goal. It will get you to God. Except if your heart is not towards God, then no matter how smart you are, no matter how hard you work, you'll just keep missing God. And so this book is really about recalibrating the heart towards God. And it won't be instantaneous, but his solution is actually habituation. We must be habituated through repeated practice to fall in love with God.